The sun has been going off recently, and NASA has been loving it. And I have been missing it all, so I had to order a new telescope. Sorry in advance for the clouds, guys. So this new telescope, it's not your average scope. For your average scope, when you're looking at the sun, you just slap a white light filter on, and you may be able to see some sunspots and some regional shading, but there's really not a whole lot of detail. But this scope in particular is a dedicated solar scope. It has a filter inside it called an Edelon, and that actually filters out all the light except this very narrow band around the hydrogen alpha one, in particular for this scope anyways. And that lets you see like the filaments and flares dancing around in the sun's surface, which is super cool. Super cool. Nice and well packaged straight from the manufacturer. I actually had to buy this one new because there is really not a used market for solar telescopes. Go figure, since it's so niche. And here she is, the Lunt 50mm. It's actually a little bit small compared to the stuff that I'm used to using, but hey, you actually don't need that much aperture since the sun is so big and so bright. So this was a nice middle ground since when you get those filters bigger, they actually cost a lot more. You also probably noticed there's this little knob sticking off the side of it for some reason, and that is actually the Edelon's tuner. So the Edelon itself, the filtering ability of it is based on this positioning of some interior components. So we have what is effectively a second kind of focuser going on here, but you need to have both of these just right in order to make sure you're actually getting the most out of the scope. Now for the telescope mounting, it does have some dovetail screws, but they're in kind of a weird spot, so if I was doing it again, I would just add the manufacturer dovetail, It'd be a little easier, but once we get it in there, it slides nicely into our 130 SLT mount, and should just work for basically any astronomy mount at this point, because all of them use the dovetail, but it's time to start getting into how this thing's actually going to work. Which is almost the same as all of our other planetary stuff, which is pretty nice. So we can build upon the expertise and stuff that we've gained during our other planetary and use almost all that here. So seeing is going to be super, super important as always. Good to keep an eye on the jet stream. Make sure we're getting a good, crisp, sharp image. And then also something that's going to be really apparent here is if we have any clouds, which during the day is a little bit different than during the night because typically clouds sort of go away during the night. It's a little bit harder here, but... We also have a little tracker that we can look at to see what exactly is on the sun, what we should expect, and whether or not stuff is worth going out right now. So we can go to this other website too, and it's a really nice resource as well. So with all that, it's time for some first light, which I was actually able to get from my apartment for the first time ever. And this turned out really, really nice. The tuning wasn't actually that hard, and everything sort of came together fairly well. Took it through AutoStacker to convert the video into still, like we always do. But additionally now, instead of Registacks and everything, we actually can use something called IPBG to do a histogram stretch. And that looks like this. And immediately you can see there's some really neat stuff going on. And if we look over to the side, there's a little bit of cosmic or solar rain over there, which is a really encouraging first sign. But a single still is not going to work. We need a time lapse. So I went out in the Texas heat in my car and got us a five hour time lapse. So here we go. Which, that was absolutely awesome. Like, we got this tiny little granule boiling texture on the surface. We got that solar rain, which was really cool, watching the, uh, the plasma zip along the magnetic field lines. We got that attempted coronal mass ejection, which was super cool watching in real time, too, because it looked like a little pimple that turned into a little burst after, like, 10 minutes, which is really kind of neat. 
And then on the macro scale, you can actually see the sun rotate, which I, I don't know, is just neat. <laughs> But something also kind of mysterious happened during that five hour session. And unfortunately, that's going to be the next video. So, hope to see you guys there. But until next time, peace. Bye, guys.